We're going to hear from uh, Dahlia Wasfi, who is an internationally known speaker and activist, born in the United States to an American Jewish mother and an Iraqi Muslim father. She lived in Iraq as a child, returning to the U.S. at age five. After graduating from Swarthmore College with a B.A. in biology in 1993, she earned her medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1997. Dr. Wasfi has made two trips to Iraq to visit her extended family since the 2003 shock and awe invasion, including a three-month stay in Basra in the spring of 2006. Based on her experiences, Dr. Wasfi is speaking out in support of immediate, unconditional withdrawal of American forces from Iraq and the need to end the occupation from the Nile to the Euphrates. And she has a website which... Dr. Wasfi's website is www.liberatethis.com. www.liberatethis.com. Dr. Wasfi. Thank you so much. Can, is this mic working? That mic. Go away. How about this? Oh, okay. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a mess. Um, I've watched as much as I could. Uh, in the past couple days, um, and uh, I'm doing better now than I was a couple hours ago, but, uh, and I think I should be all right, but please bear with me. Um, and uh, I always have to keep in check, and this is something I've learned in my work in the last three and a half years, that um, as uh, I, I rail against racism and I rail against dehumanization, and then I catch myself um, committing those things that uh, I abhor so much. So um, if I, uh, I, I don't know where I'm going to go. I have a lot of um, anger and frustration and um, uh, I believe directed at the right people and that would be um, that Capitol Hill building um, not too far away. Um, Oh, that was just a gimme applause. Um, but, um, and I do want to apologize, I've just, I, I missed two radio interviews today, thanks to KPFA for inviting me to be on the show, and I totally missed it. Um, and I missed another interview, but anyway, uh, I, I hope my frustration comes out in, in the right way, and uh, um, uh, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, if it, you could bring up my slides, please. Um, it's kind of funny that, uh, uh, well, not funny, but it's been repeatedly said today in the testimony that uh, people keep getting the, uh, when you're in Iraq, you keep getting the wrong house when you're looking for terrorists. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> The guy there will know where to find Dick Cheney. <laughs> now, um, let me start with, uh, I'm just going to start with a quote that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, and sometimes I'm the one saying it, and sometimes I think I'm the one it should be said to. Um, stated by an Aboriginal activist in Queensland, Australia in the 1970s, if you have come to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. I just want to open up with that. Next slide. This is a picture of Rachel Corey. Um, and let's see if I can get through this one. Um, Rachel Corey. Oh, no. <laughs> um, you heard about um, my degrees and, um, and my uh, education. And, and pretty much all that means at this point is that I'm in an incredible amount of debt. Um, but uh, it was September 2002, uh, and there were a few things falling apart in my life at that time. And it wasn't helping that my government was preparing to invade the country of my dad's origin. Um, and at that time, I took leave from my uh, residency uh, in anesthesiology. And uh, I've yet to go back. Uh, but uh, I was uh, very frustrated, very uh, hopeless, very depressed, and uh, was really seeking for uh, a reason to continue. 
Um, and it was around that time that I, uh, well, as the build up to the invasion continued. Um, now, when after September 11th uh, happened, uh, the anti Arab, anti Muslim racism in my work environment um, escalated significantly at Georgetown University Hospital. Um, and uh, and there were a number of different responses that could have possibly taken place after that. On one extreme, you would have our government's response, which would be to invade Afghanistan and build an oil pipeline to the Caspian Sea. And on the other end, I would say, um, would be what Rachel did. Next slide. And Rachel, uh, at the time, in March 2003, was a 23-year-old college student who, after September 11th, wanted to learn about other cultures, wanted to explore the world and try to understand what was going on. And she uh, trained with the International Solidarity Movement and went to uh, Rafa in Gaza, which is uh, one of the most uh, dangerous places uh, for people living there uh, because of the brutal occupation there. And uh, tomorrow is March 16th, 2003. Or, it's March 16th, and five years ago, on March 16th, 2003, uh, Rachel was uh, with her friends in the ISM doing one of the things they do, which is to uh, basically act as human shields to defend international law. And on that day, as you see in this picture, uh, and um, yeah, the, she was uh, trying to prevent a house demolition, uh, which over 60,000 homes have been demolished uh, in the last few years in uh, occupied Palestine, which is illegal. Uh, this was the home of a Palestinian pharmacist and his family. And uh, the Israeli soldiers came driving an American D9 Caterpillar bulldozer, a uh, tax-free gift from, uh, from you and me. Uh, the first bulldozer came and uh, Rachel, as you see in her orange flak jacket and megaphone, uh, was quite visible and she was able to deter the first bulldozer. Next one. But a second one came and after a three and a half hour standoff, I don't think Rachel ever expected what would happen next. And the uh, Israeli soldier, who was probably younger than she was, mowed her down, kept the blade down of the bulldozer and backed up over her. And Rachel had not expected that uh, she had seen what the Israelis were doing to the Palestinians living in Gaza, but she didn't think that they would change and do something to a Westerner, to an American, to someone who had light features. Um, next slide. But unfortunately, uh, Rachel was crushed to death that day. The worst part of it is that uh, she was awake the whole time because when her friends got to her, she said, my back is broken, and those were her last words. So in March 2003, so that's five years ago tomorrow, I was looking for a reason to stick around, and I was so angry with whatever power might be <laughs> that, hey, <laughs> I'm still here, and you took away this beautiful spirit who had all these things going for her and who could have turned a blind eye to the horrors of the world. She could have lived the American dream. And she chose to go 10,000 miles away um, to learn about people she didn't even know. And I know she didn't plan to die that day, but she gave her life literally standing up for what she believed in. And she's one of the reasons I'm still here today. And I thought, fine. If you took Rachel, well, I can stick around. And if she went to go see people she didn't even know, then maybe I should go see my family, who I haven't seen in 27 years. So that was the start of my activism. And Rachel is um, the example that I tried to live up to. And it's the example that I've seen today and all the panelists and yesterday. And so... I knew I wouldn't get through her story, so. Um, anyway, that's, um, this is what an American hero looks like. And these are what American heroes look like, not because they put on a uniform and picked up a weapon, but, but because they put it down and stood up for the truth. <laughs>